Hello students, this is Ashani from Chinta.com. Today, I want to share with you my experiences with using ChatGPT and Claude and other large language models for mathematical investigations. One of my favorite hobbies is to solve beautiful problems, math problems, both from school level, Olympiad problems, as well as research problems. I am interested in an area of mathematics called geometry group theory. We conduct a lot of research projects in Chinta related to that. So I constantly do problems every day from these domains. And students often ask me, is it worth, is it useful to use ChatGPT or Claude or some other tools to solve math problems? So. Here is my take on this subject. Remember that this is recorded in the month of uh, October in 2025. This is an evolving technology and I do not presume to know what would happen in the future. I will just tell you my personal experiences and what I am saying to my students. I'll say two things in particular. Maybe you can see the shared screen right now. I have asked ChatGPT to solve a problem which says that find the maximum area that can be enclosed in a quadrilateral of perimeter 100. Why I'm showing you this? This will immediately expose the first issue with large language models while solving math problems. But first let me tell you what's happening here. I'm asking ChatGPT to find the maximum area that can be enclosed in a four-sided figure, a quadrilateral, whose perimeter is 100. Now, it gives the answer as 625. So, basically, it's saying that this must be a square whose all sides are equal, 25, 25, 25, 25. So, it's 25 times 25 is 625. Excellent. Now, if you go into the logic, the reasoning that ChatGPT provides, you will immediately see there is a problem. The problem is this, that it starts with the assumption if the quadrilateral is cyclic and it produces the Brahmagupta's formula where A is equal to square root of S minus A, S minus B, S minus C, S minus D. So what is the issue here? The issue is this, that the when I asked the question, I did not assume that the quadrilateral has to be cyclic. So why did ChatGPT use that assumption in the proof? So sometimes this sort of things are known as hallucinations. You can Google it, you can ChatGPT it. How, why do large language models hallucinate? It's a big problem, it's an ongoing research you can um, you can really go go deep into this subject. It's a lot of work that's happening here uh, in this domain. At the moment, large language models often hallucinate and they produce very confidently wrong results, wrong reasoning, wrong proofs. But if you are a first time learner, if you are just starting to learn these things, you would learn from this particular output. That's a problem because you will learn it wrong. So the foundation will be incorrect. So you have to be very careful if this, whether the proof that or the solution that the system is giving you is correct or not. And you don't have any other way of knowing it because if this is your only source of knowledge, then you'll probably learn it wrong. So that's the first problem. The problem is hallucination. That's where books authored by real mathematicians come in. Even they can contain error. Nothing is error free. But books you by stalwart mathematicians are usually more worthy for a very simple reason. And I'll tell you that reason in a moment. If you understand how large language models work and you can read up about it, it's like this, that the computer is trying to, the algorithm is trying to predict 
the next word that's what it's doing it's from a host or from a family of words is trying to predict the next word of course much more is happening under the hood i'm not just saying that it's randomly predicting the next word much more complicated stuff is happening but if you boil it down to a very simple thing then that's exactly what's going on it's predicting the next word this makes this system by definition non deterministic non deterministic means there is no full proof way at the moment in this system to check whether something is correct or not there are other systems you can google lean l e a n it's a automatic theorem prover system lean and large language models are now used together to produce uh deterministic type things so i'm not going into that that's a lot of a lot of research is going in that direction and i'm i personally i'm very interested in that but right now as of today these are non deterministic probabilistic systems so you cannot expect a full proof thing from them by definition so that's the first thing software hallucination and uh, llm hallucination and non determination that's one of the reasons i tell my students as of now avoid using chat gpt or cloud instead use a book authored by a mathematician okay as a first thing there is a second problem the second problem is much more i would say profound this first problem occasional errors okay fine the second problem is much more profound is the illusion of learning stuff this happens all the time and this is a this is spreading like a pandemic right now i would say so what's going on if when a student is given a homework problem or some essay or something else they're going to chat gpt they're tweaking it a little bit they're having a conversation with the software and oh time passes by maybe 15 minutes maybe 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes parents are seeing that kid is sitting in front of the computer the kid is saying that okay i'm using technology to learn new things everyone is happy but the problem is in this entire process the main brain work is done by the software not by the student so but the student is spending time it's chatting with the software so the student is having an illusion that oh i have worked for let's say 30 minutes now on this problem but no the student didn't work the software the large language model did the work most of the work and therefore the brain muscles of the student did not get enough exercise and no learning happened and the issue is this at a young age kids are not mature enough to handle these sort of illusions with caution it's like giving a fighter jet to a kid who is just starting to learn how to cycle so it's 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 like that so the fighter jet in itself is not bad but the kid is not mature enough to not be delusional about the learning process so that's the second reason i would say uh, why i ask my students as of today to avoid using chat gpt and cloud for learning mathematics okay so these are the two main reasons now i'll give you a third bonus reason which is very close to my heart i am i for me this is the main reason i would say when i read a book by a famous and uh, accomplished mathematician let's say hilbert let's say uh, margolet let's say kumar san when i read a book authored by such mathematicians i'm not only learning mathematics i'm also seeing how these minds work each mind is different we all are different and that's beautiful that's the important part right hilbert is different from margolet margolet is different from 
Gelfand. Gelfand is different from Kubaksen. Everyone is different. Everyone is thinking differently. Arnold thinks differently. Kolmogor of thinks differently. Each book gives me uh, an exposure to this wonderful world that's inside the mind of a mathematician. I, uh, apart from the math, I also get to learn how these people think. So if you go to ChatGPT to learn, you are sort of missing out on the bigger story. You are missing out on this diversity of mathematical minds, which is, I think, a big mess. So uh, for me, right now, I will humbly request you, stay away from these tools for learning mathematical science. There are other use cases. They will definitely be useful in the long run. They're already being used in a variety of spaces. Excellent stuff. But for this specific thing, when you are learning mathematical science, when you are letting your brain muscles to exercise, when you are sort of imagining things, let's not use these things. And then when you, when you are out of that stage of your learning life, then you will start working on these. Okay, thank you for watching this video. I hope you keep on doing beautiful problems on your own. Keep on struggling with these problems. And if you are interested in uh, Olympiad programs, research programs, leadership programs, check the link in the description. We have beautiful programs on that. We are very passionate about, uh, about these things. So I, I think you'll like us. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thank you.